Welcome to Channel 2S, everybody. I'm your host, Second Sound Wave, and we're joined today by the high-grade Gaia Gundam in the closest thing to a dynamic pose that it can muster. However, we're not going to be talking directly about the Gaia Gundam today because today's video is another episode of Gunpla News. But before we get into the news, we got to thank our sponsor, New Type HQ. New Type HQ is a US-based Gunpla store where you can buy not just all the Gunpla you would need, but also any tools, paint, supplies, basically anything you need to do the hobby. They got a really great selection of stuff and they just updated their website, so go check it out in the link in the description below and don't forget to use code CHANNEL2S for 10% off your order. All right, so we're starting off the news tonight with my favorite kit that I never knew I wanted until it was announced, and that was the Master Grade Lunamari Zaku Warrior. I never in a million years would have guessed we'd actually get a Master Grade of it, but it just so happens to be one of the few characters I don't despise from Seed, and a pretty awesome looking Zaku variant at that, so it was kind of a win-win for me. Because the kit's coming out later this month, we have some box art, and in true Master Grade fashion, it looks incredible. The pose looks really cool, they've got an awesome Zaku Phantom in the background taking up the back part of the screen. Now the background itself is a little bit plain, it's a little boring, it's mostly just clouds and smoke and rocks. But in a way, the dullness of the background still kind of works since it really makes the mobile suit itself, the one you're supposed to be looking at, pop right out of the picture. Also coming out this month, and as a result, we have box art of it as well, is the After Colony Gundam Sandrock. Now, this is a kit that a lot of people have been looking forward to because Wing is, you know, this massive thing in the US, and the box art for this looks just as great as the Lunamari Ozaku. Now, I don't know if I mentioned this before, but the Gundam Sandrock, or at least the first production run of it, will come with a code for Gundam Breaker Mobile that will unlock the entirety of the Sandrock in the game. Now, usually with this type of promotion, they just throw a sticker on the box that says, hey, there's a code inside. But in the case of this particular release, they seem to be really pushing the Gundam Breaker Mobile aspect because the entire name of the kit on the box is changed to say Gundam Sandrock and Gundam Breaker Mobile product code set. They're really pushing that aspect of the kit. Now, this is just for the first production run of the kit. So later production runs, most likely as well, the ones we'll be seeing in the US, and many other countries will be changed to just say Gundam Sandrock. Also, if you live outside of Japan and you're thinking of purchasing one of these first production run versions in order to get the code, you probably should know that as far as I understand, the code only works with the Japanese version of the game. So as far as I know, unless you're playing on a Japanese account, the code's not going to be doing you any good. So the release of Build Divers Rerise is coming closer and closer, and as a result, we're starting to learn a little bit more about some of the kits from this show. So we did get some new pictures for quite a few of these, but most of them were just kind of slightly higher resolution versions of pictures we've already seen. So I picked out one here that I thought was at least a little bit interesting, and that's of the Gundam Seltzam. So we've already seen the Seltzam with its giant Code Geass extending arm. We've already seen the Lance very obviously placed on its back, but now we can see that the Seltzam has a third gimmick in the form of a cannon attached to the back. This cannon can rotate down underneath the arm, kind of like you'd see on something like the Destiny Gundam, and it's uh, very similar to the smoothbore rifle that came with the Barbatos. One of many almost IBO, but not actually IBO references across this kit. Back when the real great new Gundam was first revealed, they we're really pushing the figureized effect parts that went with it. Now, it wasn't initially apparent that these were specifically for the new Gundam. They seem like just general effect parts to use with your figure arts and your figureized standards and all that. But it seems like Bandai really was pushing them specifically for the new Gundam because now they're releasing a second release of the real grade new Gundam that actually comes with that figureized effect set. So the real grade new Gundam with funnel effect set is going to be a mass retail release. It's coming out in December. And this is everything that you would get with the normal real grade new Gundam plus those funnel effects and a clear action base for. So it's a little bit more expensive than a normal kit, 6,600 yen, but you are getting a lot here for your money. Now, if you're like me and you haven't already picked up a real great new Gundam, I think this is a pretty good alternative. You're getting the base kit and you're getting some really awesome effect parts to go with it. Next up is a long expected, long awaited premium Bandai kit, and that is the high grade Sinandri Stein Unicorn version. Now the narrative Sinandri Stein, I've never been a fan of it. I really haven't. I think the sleeves markings look tacked on. I really don't like that they replaced the white with a kind of off-white, dirty gray color. Just really nothing about the redesign clicks with me. However, I never really wanted to paint or customize my Sinatra Stein narrative version because I kind of always knew that this kit was gonna eventually come out. And as you can see, it is basically the narrative Sinatra Stein we already got converted back into the Unicorn or UCMSV version. That little bit in the bottom of the shields opened up, the gun's back to the old heavy weapon system new Gundam style gun, the sleeve markings are gone, the fuel tanks are shorter, and the color scheme is the classic pure white, or 
relatively close to pure white compared to the narrative version. I think this looks pretty great. It's totally understandable that it's P Bandai, and I'm just glad to see it exists because this is pretty much the best version of the Sinanju Stein. Just like the new Gundam of the Funnels, this is coming out in December 2019, and hopefully, hopefully, uh, Bluefin picks this one up so we'll be able to get it in the U.S., not long after, but for now, we don't really know for sure. Now, unfortunately, they did confirm that the Mudrock is not getting a US release, so it seems like everything we're getting from now on is not necessarily guaranteed to get a US release, just the ones Bluefin decides they want to release over here. The Master Grade Regis Z Custom was kind of an interesting kit because they took a lot of aspects of the original Master Grade Regis Z and they kind of tweaked them a little bit and they kind of finagled the mold to make it feel more like a modern Master Grade. Now, the kit was still a little bit clunky at its core. After all, it is still mostly a, what, 20 year old kit at this point. But the little improvements they made did seem to help the kit out a lot. Well, now we are coming closer and closer to a Regis Z version 1.5 or 1.9 or 1.1 in the form of the Master Grade Regis Z Unicorn version. Now, this is not just a straight recolor of the Regis Z. This is a partially new Regis Z kit that takes the modifications of the Regis Z custom and takes them a little bit further. So, the head has been re-sculpted to look more modern in its styling. The torso has been changed so that it now has an ab crunch. The hands are modern style hands with the swap out fingers. The rifle's a little bit longer. He has a thigh swivel. There's a lot of little changes they made to this kit to try to make it fit in more with the modern models. The shoulder joints have also been redesigned as well, which was a major issue that the original Regis had. The kit looked cool, it really wasn't that bad for as old a model as it was, but he just couldn't hold up his weapons. So now we've got ourselves a slightly newer Regis Z kit that's not perfect. I don't think this is gonna be an amazing model or anything like that, but it does look like it's gonna be fixing a lot of the issues people had with the original Regis Z, even if it isn't in the classic Regis Z colors. Good choice for the P-Bandai web shop, kind of an interesting experiment, this kind of half 1.0, half 2.0 thing. And I wouldn't mind seeing them release this tweaked mold in the colors of the original Regis Z, but that's probably not gonna happen. In the meantime though, we'll be able to make do with this unicorn version in December, 2019. All right, Dengeki hobby image time. You know what that means? snap builds, no paint, no panel lines, just regular old plastic like you get out of the box. Let's start with Lunamaria Zaku because that's pretty much the most hype kit of this month and the one that I myself am most looking forward to. Right out the bat, this kit has very vibrant colors. It's a really bright red and the other noticeable striking thing about this kit is it's got a really extreme redesign. Now I've touched on the redesign of this kit a little bit before and having seen more images of it more recently, I don't know if I'm a fan of all aspects of it. For the most part, I think it's faithful enough to the original design that it gets a pass, but there's a couple points where I think it deviates just a little bit too much from the anime design. The first point where I really notice this is with the shield. It's not a flat plate. It doesn't really look like a shield. It kind of comes up in the middle. And I think adding a little bit of variance in the height of the shield surface could have worked if it wasn't such a dramatic incline. With the shield as it is, I think they made the angle of the shape just a little bit too steep. It also kind of bugs me that they added just a random extra beam spike coming out of the top of the heat hawk, or I guess beam hawk, because this is seed. The rest of the redesigns to the axe are pretty extreme, but if they didn't have that extra bit coming out of the top, it would still reasonably pass as the classic beam hawk. Now, fortunately, you can just pull that little beam effect part off, and you basically have the classic beam hawk. With the questionable redesign out of the way, I am also interested in the way they're doing the hoses for this kit. It seems like they're getting rid of that old Zaku-style hose design where you'd have the springs and the little those little loop shaped pieces and it was just not a not a very good way to do hoses. I never liked that way of hose design. Sometimes they'd use a plastic horn instead of a spring but they always still had this kind of off look to them. However, the Lunamaria Zaku is going to instead be attaching the hose segments together with the double ended ball joint pieces. So there's still gonna be a lot of flexibility here, but it's gonna be an entirely constructed piece with no core of any kind, which I'm hoping makes it a lot more stable. Although when it comes to things like stability, you can't really tell how good it's gonna be until somebody eventually gets the kit in hand. We also got Dengeki Hobby picks for the Sand Rock. Most of these we've already seen before. A lot of these are from the last month and the month before. But since a lot of people were asking about them, these pictures do show off the heat activated versions of the Shoto Blades, translucent red. They showed these off before, but I think some people didn't really pick up on those pictures and I still sometimes see people saying, hey, why doesn't it have the heat activated blades? Well, there you go. All right, big boy time, high grade Penelope. I would be picking this kit up. I think it looks really cool, but unfortunately Bandai made the absolutely brilliant 5,000 IQ decision to release two very expensive new Gunpla kits in the same month. So unfortunately, I am gonna have to pass up on the Penelope 
for now, in favor of the high-res burning Gundam. But man, this kit looks really good. This is a bulky high grade, so a lot of people were expecting some cost-cutting measures on it, but looking at it right now, just snap built, it actually looks pretty good. Now I did some side-by-side -side comparison with some line art of the original, the original Penelope, the original Odysseus Gundam, and the color scheme compared to the novel version of the Odysseus Gundam is a little bit different. It is kind of quote unquote missing some color apps. You know, the original had some blue on the legs, some red on the torso. However, I then looked at some pictures of Katoki's redesign of the Penelope, which looked like pretty much a dead-on replica of this one. I believe this is trying to look like the Katoki design. It has those little supports by the feet, it has the white legs, it has the white torso, it has the blue bits on the shields, and if that's what it's trying to go for, it pretty much nails it. The Penelope with all the extra armor looks pretty great, and once you strip it off, the Odysseus Gundam doesn't look that bad either. I'm not seeing any super obvious cost-cutting measures on the core Gundam, but yeah, this is a really fantastic looking kit that unfortunately I won't be able to pick up on release, but I will try to get my hands on one soon after. All right, guys, we're back in Bill Diver's re-rise territory, Earth 3 Gundam. Let's see what this bad boy has to offer. First thing I'm noticing right out of the bat that I'm not a huge fan of is the eyes. We're going back to the old HGU see days of just a solid red piece that you slap a sticker on. I've kind of gotten a little bit spoiled lately by a lot of the newer HGUC kits and how they'll have a separately molded piece for the eyes, either in green or clear or something to that extent. It's kind of become a standard by this point, and it's a little bit disappointing to see that the Earth 3 Gundam, which is basically a new 2019 mold, doesn't have that. But that aside, I think the kit looks pretty nice, honestly. You can pretty much ignore the fact that the core Gundam exists, and you got yourself a pretty cool looking lead Gundam. Pretty much immediately, the first thing my attention's drawn to after those iffy eyes is the ankle tilt on this thing looks like it's going to be insane. The ball joint is actually mounted sideways, which means that you might not have a lot of forward and back movement out of the ankle, but you're gonna have pretty much a full 180 side to side. You're definitely gonna be able to get some really cool poses out of this kit, especially on the ground. And as for the core Gundam itself, it exists. The best thing I can really hope for is that the core Gundam transformation doesn't affect the integrity of the Earth 3 itself. So you can basically just leave it in Earth 3 mode forever and forget the core Gundam exists. Justice Knight Gundam also got the Dengeki Hobby treatment and we get to see that lovely Bandai gold all over the kit. But at this point that should be kind of inevitable when it comes to high grades that have gold anything on them. The rest of the color scheme looks pretty nice. I do like those little green golded in stripes on the torso. That's pretty sharp. That little bit of gold on the chevron on the center gem in the forehead. And I'm also just now noticing there's little bits of gray along the side of his faceplate. That's some really nice color separation actually. Unfortunately though, the surprisingly good color separation on the body is kind of brought down by the fact that his sword is just a big white slab of plastic. I mean, sure, it's a high grade, but that thing looks like it belongs on an action figure from the 80s. But there's not really a whole lot I can nitpick aside from that. This actually does look like a pretty good kit. All right, next up we have more Degeki Hobby pictures of the Heavy Arms Ingle. There's really not much I can say about this one. It pretty much looks how you would expect. The color separation on the new parts looks about the same as the color separation on the old Master Grade Heavy Arms. That's about all I can say. So finally, closing out tonight, we have one last batch of Degeki Hobby pictures, and this is for the High Grade Universal Century Second Victory Gundam. Now, I had never heard of this design before this kit was announced, and I gotta say, it's really starting to grow on me. Now, I don't know who designed this, if it was some new thing that Katoki came up with. I know it's from like a novel or something, it was like a replacement for the V2 Gundam, but I just think it's a really interesting design. I like the look of it a lot. Now, even though it's based off the high-grade victory mold, it is still pretty sharp looking as far as color separation goes. It looks like a really nice little kit. I was kind of dismissive of it at first. I didn't really think it would be something I was interested in, but it's really quickly growing on me. And I think that is gonna do it for tonight, guys. So thanks for watching. As always, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like, check out channel sponsor New Type HQ at the link below, and use channel 2S for 10% off your order. If you're new, subscribe to channel 2S for more Gundam and Gunpla content. And as always, I'm your host, Second Soundwave, and I will see you next time. Take care, guys.